Hey, Redcon Raider here, and welcome to The Magister by Nerduk. <laughs> now, obviously, we're currently between larger projects, so uh, today I thought we'd uh, take a quick look at one of the smaller games I've recently been spending a lot of time with. Under normal circumstances, I would uh, usually just throw together some sort of quick little overview. But in this particular case, the Magister is uh, still in closed beta. There's a lot of content that's not accessible at the moment, and it is actively changing from update to update. So uh, I thought we'd take a bit more of a casual approach today. We'll just jump right in, kick the tires, and uh, give you a better idea of what the game currently has to offer. We'll save a uh, proper overview for once the game actually hits launch. That said, um, if I had to describe the game in a single sentence, I would say that Magister is a turn-based tactical RPG with procedurally generated elements, as well as card-based mechanics, mini-games, and clue-based mystery solving, all set in a dark fantasy world with a rather intriguing, if uh, somewhat underexplored, setting. I mean, that said, it is worth noting this is a small, low-budget indie project, so it's important to keep your expectations in check. Anyway, uh, a lot easier to show than tell, so uh, let's get started. The first thing we have to do is choose our difficulty setting. In this particular case, we'll stick with difficulty 1, which is about medium. That's just so I can make sure I actually get to show you a variety of mechanics as opposed to just uh, dying out in the wilderness somewhere. Now we have to choose our Magister, and um, this is pretty straightforward. You'll always have three basic Magister archetypes available. A strong Magister, an intelligent Magister, and a cunning Magister, each with access to their own specialized skills and abilities. But what is randomized each time you play is what their crippling drawback is. In this case, we've got Insomniac, Fanatic, and Hallucinator, which is amusing, but does make the game much, much harder. Um, in this case, I think we will go with the Intelligent Fanatic. Uh, he will be exceptionally good at solving mysteries, but he will also need to make periodic visits to the local temple. That will eat a little of our time each day, but overall it's not too bad. Then we have to assign our single skill point, which we can use to unlock a specialization in our default skill tree. Those obviously uh, give us various bonuses to negotiations or combat, or they can even give us new ways to interact with our surroundings. And um, you'll also notice that there is a small assortment that aren't available in the current beta. And aside from that, we uh, can also spend our skill point to unlock entirely new skill trees, the Physique or Guile trees. But for now, I think we'll go ahead and uh, keep things simple, and we'll just go for Deduction. This is, of course, a murder mystery, so being able to deduce things could come in handy. Here we go. A gentle sea breeze blows in from the southwest. After a three-hour ship journey, you've reached the province of Silverhurst. Your boat is tied to the village docks, and you see a town official waving at you from the pier. Inside your pocket are your Magister's orders, signed by the Magister General himself. You have been sent here to investigate a murder, the death of a Magister. The Magister Citadel tends to take these things seriously. I'm over here, Magister. It's an old man. He looks like a town official of some sort. Good morning, Magister. Welcome to Silverhurst. My name is Sigmar, and I'm the local councilman. I've made the necessary arrangements for your arrival and investigation. Tell me about the murder. Of course. What would you like to know? Is there a Temple of the Living Tree here? He raises an eyebrow. 
He coughs nervously and marks a location on your map. Uh, yes, we do have a local temple of the Church of the Living Tree. Here it is, Magister. All right, tell me about the murder. He narrows his eyes. The maid at the Burping Gladiator Inn found his body in the private room two days ago. The room is sealed, but you can get the key from the innkeeper, Friedrich. Nobody really knows anything else other than that. Thank you for your assistance. He nods. Very good, Magister. If you need me again, you can find me in the village square just north of here. I wish you the best of luck in your investigation. You have improved your relationship with the councilman by one star. As you perform tasks for various villagers, your relationship with them will gradually improve. Many characters will only be cooperative once your relationship with them reaches three stars. Many of the most vital clues about who killed your predecessor can only be obtained by maxing out your reputation with the various prime suspects. I mean, you can still figure out who the murderer is and uh, complete the scenario, even without a full set of evidence, but doing that will give you a lower overall score and potentially affect what achievements you unlock. The board. This board represents a mental map of your investigations. Mouse over an item to view more details. You can view this board again at any time by clicking on View Board from your journal. The murder occurred in the private room of the Burping Gladiator Inn. You should go there and find a way to get into the private room. A magister has been murdered in Silverhurst. Right, right. Obviously, we don't have much in the way of leads to follow just yet, but we did just get here. Um, I will note, the overall structure of the scenario is more or less the same each time you play, but a lot of the uh, individual details will end up changing. The suspects, the motives, the evidence, or what that evidence means. I mean, I have uh, personally already played through this scenario three times now, and I ended up seeing something new every time. This man has a really impressive beard. He stares at you quietly as you approach. Hey there. Name's Marius. Can I help you? He asks in a gruff voice. What do you do here? I run errands for the guards, he explains. Odd jobs and such. Nothing important. Uh-huh. Another question. What now? He grunts in a gruff voice. What do you know about the murder? Didn't do it. Was here whole night. Same as every night, he replies. Have trouble sleeping. I watched the sea. Well, we didn't really get much out of that, but uh, we do at least know his name is Marius and he's a messenger, so that might be relevant later. I was actually uh, expecting there to be an event waiting here for me, but uh, I guess that's randomized. Interesting. All right, well, we will uh, just continue with our investigation. We need to head to the Burping Gladiator Inn, get the private key, and inspect the murder site, and start expanding our suspect pool. Passing time. Each time you leave a location and return to the world map, time is advanced. Use your time wisely. Once it's late night, most locations are empty, and you need to return to the inn. So, yeah, you've got a built-in time limit on how long you can take to resolve the scenario. The column on the right shows exactly what time of day it is, which is also relevant because... Certain events or characters will only be present during certain times of day. 
Anyway, we will uh, begin our investigation in the most logical place. The scene of the crime. It's the sign for the inn. There's a painted gladiator with a spiked helmet on it. The gladiator's burping. The painter even drew a green cloud of gas erupting out of his mouth. Below the pictures are the words, The Burping Gladiator Inn. Classy. <laughs> I do believe the name is actually randomized uh, every time you play. It's the innkeeper of the Burping Gladiator Inn. He nods his head at you and waits for your response. You hear about the dead magister? He grunts, wiping grime off a mug. We sealed off his room after the body was found the next morning. My name's Friedrich, owner of this fine establishment. Mm. You take a deep breath and focus your senses on the innkeeper. Middle-aged male, humorous, piercing eyes, untidy hair, too busy with the inn to groom himself properly, cheap, dirty clothes, stained with wine, cheap copper earring, strong build. Years of working at the inn have given him the constitution of an ox. Seems friendly and honest, likely relieved to be dealing with a figure of authority rather than the usual village drunks. Conclusion, the innkeeper is a busy man, but not a wealthy one. He is friendly, strong, and well-built. So, how can I help you today, Magister? He says. What do you know about the murder? It was a busy night at the inn, so I manned the bar downstairs all night. We're short-staffed here when there's a crowd. You know how it is. I only heard about the murder the next morning when the barmaid found the body. Gruesome business, that was. Look, there were plenty of witnesses who saw me here. I never went upstairs, Magister. I see. Thank you for your cooperation. Who found the body? I have a maid who helps out around the inn. Her name's Wanda. Poor thing was terrified with what she saw. Had to send her home. She's still not back to work yet. He sniffs. Dreadful business, this. I believe she lives down by the village docks. If you'd like to talk to her. Wanda lives near the docks. Another question. Anyone else saw anything? It's strange. I was here the whole night. Didn't notice anything unusual. He frowns. But then again, there's always someone coming or going here. I'm busy enough behind the bar as it is. How about coming back this evening? There's a regular named Moritz. Lurks around the place every night. If anyone saw anything strange, it'd be him. Moritz. Got it. That is, of course, our first time-sensitive event. We'll have to come back in the evening. I need the key to the crime scene. The innkeeper takes out a key. Sure, here it is. The magister stayed in the private room upstairs. End of the hallway, largest room we have. Can't miss it. Thank you. Any interesting rumors today? Well, it's true that there are all sorts of interesting things happening every day. However, the barmaid is missing, so I'm swamped with work here. If you can persuade her to get back to work, Magister, that would be a big help. Hmm, you should probably try asking him again when you improve your relationship with him to three stars. Right, I should ask again later. Who are you talking to? All right, our to-do list is uh, steadily growing longer. But we are already here, so let's have a look at that private room. The door is locked. 
you can actually crack those doors open if you have the thievery specialization from the guile tree. And uh, that will give you access to some early loot if you don't mind stealing from the other guests. Of course, there uh, are potential consequences if you overdo it. You open the door with the private room key. The bed has not been made. There are some blood stains on the sheets. You search under the bed, but there's nothing to be found, except a small leather strap. You examine the strap carefully. It looks vaguely familiar. You can't quite remember where you've seen it before. Let's have a closer look at that. You found this strap under the dead magister's bed. It looks vaguely familiar. Where did this strap come from? Click on a phrase that leads to the following conclusion. A missing journal. I think we can do that. A book that can't be found. The account of daily events. An account of all his thoughts. Deduction success. You manage to link the phrases together into the correct conclusion. A missing journal. Wait a minute. In a flash of inspiration, you remember where you've seen it before. You pull out your journal and sure enough, the leather strap is similar. A leather strap for a journal. That's right. All magisters keep a journal. You decide to add this as a new clue to examine later. Where is the Magister's missing journal? The Magister's journal is missing. Perhaps you can use your deduction skills to find where it went. Fire or water? Hmm. Lying in a watery grave. Burned or submerged. A flaming wreck or a sunken treasure. Deduction success. I can't say that's the most challenging minigame, but I do like the uh, presentation. The journal was most likely either burned or thrown into a body of water. Hmm. You'll need to explore and eliminate each possibility in turn. The journal... Thrown off the docks, burned in the fireplace, thrown into the pond at the temple, or thrown into the village well. We're already at the end, so uh, we might as well start with that one. In the main dining area of the inn, a fireplace roars hotly. It's the perfect place to dispose of evidence. Just throw it in and it becomes ashes. Or perhaps there will be traces left. Well, we will take a look at that in just a moment, but we should probably finish up here first. The floor is a mess. It looks like there was a struggle of some kind. The contents of the overturned table are scattered all over the floor. You notice a chicken drumstick scattered across the floor. Someone took a bite out of it. You pick it up carefully and place it inside your jacket pocket. You found this food item at the crime scene. You should show this to someone who can tell you more, or examine it again when you have the alchemy skill. Which, of course, we can't actually get in the beta, so we will uh, have to find outside assistance. Wait a minute. You spot something on the floor. Brown leaves. You sniff it. There's a distinct aroma. Perhaps you need to examine this more closely. Did this belong to the Magister or the Murderer? You need to find someone who can identify what these brown leaves are. 
or examine it again when you have the herbology skill. That one we can actually get. You found the body of the dead magister. The sight of it stirs deeply buried emotions within you, an odd mix of anger and helplessness, and a burning urge to correct an injustice in the world. You have gained a bonus skill point. You may use it to unlock a new skill or specialization. First things first, you should check the body for clues. There is a single gunshot wound in the middle of his chest. The size of the entry wound is consistent with a revolver fired at close range. Hmm, that's strange. You don't see a revolver on the floor. Perhaps you should talk to the innkeeper about this later. You check the Magister's pockets. You find some coins and a small iron key. You take the money and pocket the key. You wonder what lock it opens. You have leveled up. Each time you gain enough experience to level up, you gain one extra perk that grants your Magister an advantage for the rest of this playthrough. Click to select a new perk. Hovering over each perk will show a description of it. Or, of course, we could uh, not take any perk, which would grant us a small bonus to our hit points and a modest XP bonus. But I'm sure we can find something better. Gifted. Gain an extra skill point. Forgotten. Delete a card from your deck. And Guile. Unlock the Guile skill tree. And Tactical Diplomacy. Interesting. Okay. Well, considering I was going to use that skill point from Gifted to unlock Guile, um, we might as well take Guile instead. I'm pretty sure each of these perks can only be taken once, so uh, if we take Guile this time around... We should hopefully have another chance to grab Gifted later down the line. Alright, I believe we are done up here for now. It is interesting to note that um, the clues we found this time around are actually fairly different from the ones I usually find. Uh, the gun is missing, there are obvious signs of a struggle, blood stains on the bed. Based on what we've seen so far, it is probably safe to assume our killer is someone strong or skilled enough to take the Magister on in a fight, and someone who smokes, assuming the uh, brown leaves we found are actually tobacco. Though uh, it is possible the Magister himself is the smoker, so that's something we'll have to find out. Are you done with the body, Magister? You suspect the journal was burned in the fireplace. If that is true, there might be some remnants of it in the ash. Perhaps if you dig into the ashes, you might find something. You dig around in the ashes of the fireplace, hoping to find some remnants of the journal. Despite your best efforts, you fail to find anything. Either the journal was completely burned, or it is somewhere else. Perhaps a different conclusion will be required. Okay, well, we uh, have to go find the bartender's waitress anyway. So, we will try the docks next. The docks are within walking distance of the inn, and the sea and tide will eventually erase any evidence thrown into it. Perhaps it's time to visit the docks and check if anyone did so. All right, just gotta tie up some loose ends here. Let's have another chat with Friedrich. It's the innkeeper of the Burping Gladiator Inn. The dead magister was shot. Was there a revolver in the room? The innkeeper starts sweating. Um, no, magister. I uh, don't know anything about that. Sorry. He sounds really nervous. Well, we have uh, already used deduction a couple of times, so 
Let's try out Tactical Diplomacy. Okay, so this looks complicated at first glance, but you get used to it pretty quickly. The general gist of the Tactical Diplomacy minigame is that you want to play cards to build up empathy, and then you use that empathy to play more powerful cards, which will reduce your target's rage. If you reduce rage to zero, you win. If 12 turns pass and your target still has any rage, you lose. And uh, you only get one shot at it, so you do have to live with the consequences. It's also important to note that, with a few rare exceptions, your default deck will always reset for each new Tactical Diplomacy. As usual, showing is easier than telling, so... Weak joke. Grants two empathy, but also annoys your target, so we'll skip that one. Consider this. Draw two cards, discard one. Hmm. That might come in handy. Yeah, we'll grab that. Ah, looks like he's annoyed anyway. And there's our Break Will card. That is our main method of reducing our target's rage, though not the only one. We'll have to raise a lot more empathy before we can actually play it, though. Let's cycle Annoyed. Ooh, warning shot. That either grants us three empathy or a one in three chance of reducing rage immediately. You'll also notice that it's banished when played, which means it's removed from our play deck for the rest of this encounter. No reason not to use it. Either way, we'll get something useful. Hey, look at that. Minus one rage. Not too shabby. Hmm. We'll pass on those. Ooh, long talk. Gain two empathy immediately, and upgrade any small talk card in your hand. That is definitely worth grabbing. Discard the annoyed. Burn through the small talk. Gain three empathy, then delete this and another random card from your hand. That seems a bit too steep. Impatient. Spend three empathy to permanently delete this card and draw two in its place. Interesting. I think we'll just play Break Will instead. Long talk, which ranks up our small talk, and we will continue to ignore the impatience. Not enough to play Break Will again, but we might get lucky if we cycle Annoyed. Nope, but it was worth a shot. And there we go. Tactical Diplomacy Successful The innkeeper pulls a wrapped package that was hidden behind the counter of the bar. All right, I'm sorry, Magister. I hid it because I didn't want you to suspect me. The truth is, I've always kept an old revolver here, just in case. 
On the night of the murder, someone stole it, and I found it the next morning. One bullet had been fired. I knew it would look bad if someone found out, so I hid it. I realize now that it was wrong to do that. Here, take the gun. You carefully take the revolver from the innkeeper. Well, at least now you have the murder weapon. Thank you. Okay, I think we are done with him for now. And it looks like there's nothing special about the gun. But it is important to have the murder weapon, because we'll need to present that to our boss at the end of the scenario. The more evidence you present, the easier it will be to make your final accusation stick. At any rate, let's head back out to the world map and uh, head back to the docks. Oh, right, we uh, have another skill point. Okay, uh, as you can see, we now have access to the Guile Tree as well. And I would really like to pick up the Thievery skill. Being able to pick locks can be very useful. But I think we're going to go with World Knowledge first. That uh, gives us information about the world around us, is useful for interpreting certain clues, and is a valuable source of extra experience points. All right, back to the docks. We've got a couple of things we have to do out there. Oh, hey, we've got all sorts of people waiting for us this time. I guess we'll start with what I assume is the missing waitress. It looks like the barmaid of the Burping Gladiator Inn. This must be the girl the innkeeper told you about. Hi there. She jumps at the sound of your voice. Oh, another magister. Are you here to... Oh no, it was terrible. The barmaid bursts into tears. Looks like this is Wanda, like the innkeeper said. You're going to need tactical diplomacy to get anything out of her. All right, well, we will attempt to calm her down. Obviously, we uh, just went through the basics of tactical diplomacy, so... I'll see if I can jam through this one a bit quicker. Hmm. Heavy-handed. Not worth it. <laughs> Calm down. Gotta be careful, our draw deck is getting bloated. Ah, and there we go. You finally managed to calm her down. Sorry, my lord. I was just so shaken. You nod patiently. Don't worry about it. Just take a deep breath. When you're ready, tell me what happened. I was working in the inn that night, handling the usual busy crowd. There was a terrible thunderstorm that night, with heavy rain from evening till dawn. Maybe that's why nobody heard anything. I only went upstairs the next morning, and found the magister's door slightly ajar. She hesitates, then continues on, voice trembling. I opened the door and screamed. He was just lying dead on the floor. 
I ran downstairs to find the innkeeper. He sealed the room. The door was locked, and he sent a messenger to the signal tower. Everyone knows a dead magister was bad news. Sure enough, you arrived here the next morning. All right, let's see what we've got here. The barmaid told you there was a thunderstorm and heavy rain on the night of the murder. The barmaid said a messenger was sent to the signal tower when the body was found. Perhaps you should ask her more about this messenger. Yes, we will do that. Do you remember who sent the message on the night of the murder? She thinks for a while, then replies. Of course I remember. The messenger was Marius. He often runs errands for the guards. If you need to speak with him, I'm sure you can find him down by the docks, where he always hangs out. Right, so that is the guy we saw on our way in. Aha, uh -huh. but first... You suspect the journal was thrown into the sea. If that is true, it would be easiest to do it here from the docks. Here, among the smaller boats, it would be easy to simply drop it into the water. You wade into the sea and begin searching for the journal. Despite your best efforts, you fail to find anything. Either the tide took the journal away, or it is somewhere else. All right, um, we have to pay a visit to the temple anyway, so I guess we'll check there next. There is a pond in the temple gardens that is accessible from the path, and many people visit the temple daily. You should search the pond to see if the journal was thrown into the water. The various provinces of the Empire are connected by sea and land. Docks like these are found in many major cities and seaside villages. The powerful Imperial steamships chug between them, transporting both freight and passengers. Metal behemoths on the water that demonstrate the might of the Empire. Neat. Greetings. What now? You sent the message to the signal tower when the dead magister was found? I sent it late, though, he explained. When I arrived, the boys were fixing it. Had to wait an hour. Well, that's interesting. The signal tower was being repaired the morning after the murder. Sabotage? Or just a coincidence? You should go there and ask. Right. Thanks. We could use some help, Magister. This man is dressed like the guards, but with extra trimmings that indicate a higher position of command. Morning. Hey there, Magister, he says. My name is Hildebart. I'm the captain of the guards in Silverhurst, and we are here to help you and the councilmen keep the peace. You take a breath and focus your senses on the captain. Well-kept goatee, old battle scars, steady eye contact, expensive, high-quality armor, silk cape, strong build, experienced fighter, expert with a sword. Small shard on string around neck. Faint whispering from shard? Hmm. 
confident, fearless, not easily intimidated. Aura of authority. Conclusion. The captain is strong and wealthy. He has a cape and is obviously capable of taking care of himself in battle. Hey there, Magister, says the captain. What can I do for you today? Where were you on the night of the murder? I'm always busy keeping the peace in Silverhurst. These things always slip my mind. He hesitates and his voice trails off. You sense he's hiding something. Okay, so there's really no point in asking those sorts of questions until we've maxed out our reputation. Any crimes you need help with? Well, we can always use the help of a magister. Here are the cases we have at the moment. Hmm. We are a master of deduction, so we will go for the strange death. There's been a mysterious death in the village. Can you go take a look for us, Magister? And I believe that is our very first side quest. Those serve as a source of additional experience points and resources, but they can also sometimes serve as a gateway to uh, the clues we need to actually solve the mystery. This lady carries herself with a confident air. The expensive clothes indicate that she is no ordinary woman. Morning. Magister, she replies, her voice a melodic drawl. My name's Ethelind. I am a courtesan. The best one in Silverhurst, in fact. She smiles, then takes a long drag from her smoking stick, blowing smoke to one side. What exactly is it that you do? <laughs> she bursts out laughing at your question. Her laugh is strangely attractive. Deep and gravelly, but sweet. It's not quite what you think, Magister. I am an intellectual courtesan. Instead of satisfying your physical needs, I am highly skilled in satisfying the deeper needs of your mind. She smiles again. It's a beautiful smile. People pay me money to help them forget. You get paid to help people forget? I don't think that sounds like it's a good deal. <laughs> she gives another giggle. Well, worth and value are rather subjective. I'm certain you'll change your mind eventually, Magister. Why not give it a try? I might even give a special discount, just to have someone as important as the local Magister to spend time with. I'm not sure I need to forget anything, to be honest. She gives you an amused look, then stares deep into your eyes. If that were true, you wouldn't be wielding religious ritual and dogma like a shield against harsh reality, Magister. Your dedication to the Church is commendable, but ultimately self-destructive. Spend some time with me, and I can help you face the world without it. Once again, a disarming smile. If you can afford me, that is. I see. An intellectual courtesan. Uh, got it. What can I do for you today? Hmm. You take a breath and focus your senses on the courtesan. Highly intelligent eyes, piercing gaze, expensive makeup and jewelry, expensive, tasteful clothes, the latest fashion in the capital. Doesn't seem strong enough to fight a magister. Smokes from a fashionable smoking stick. Slight smirk. Faint amusement. Conclusion. The courtesan is wealthy and smokes from a smoking stick, commonly used by the aristocracy in the capital. Thank you. That's all for now.
We're running a bit short on time, but let's see what else we can do. Well, we've got three more ticks until we hit Nightfall. So... Let's head for the temple. We'll see if the journal is there, and uh, we have to visit that place anyway because of our drawback. I'm almost at the temple. I'll need to go inside. You suspect the journal was thrown into this pond. If that is true, you may be able to retrieve it from the water. Plenty of people come to the temple. It would be easy to sneak a journal in. You wade into the pond and begin searching for the journal. Despite your best efforts, you fail to find anything. Perhaps it is somewhere else. And, uh, by process of elimination, that has to be the town well. There is a deep well in the village square. It's deep enough and dark enough that things can be thrown inside. You should find a way to check if there is anything inside the well. Perhaps the trader can help? Duly noted. The Church of the Living Tree is the largest organized religion in the Empire. Their temples are opulent and well-built, and the mysterious inquisitors enforce the will of the Church. Believers often congregate at the temples for spiritual guidance, while the Magister Citadel has always kept an uneasy eye on Church activities, believing them to have a different agenda from that of the Empire itself. Which I suppose makes my, uh, fanaticism a bit awkward, doesn't it? AP rounds. All revolver attacks ignore the target's block and armor. Instant defense. Whenever you play a defend card, draw a card. Chatterbox. Replace a small talk one card with a long talk card when you start tactical diplomacy. Now that could come in handy. But we haven't gotten into any fights yet, and I do want to be prepared when that happens, so... We'll go for the AP rounds. Honestly, though, all three of these are good choices. The church comforts me. I have fulfilled my religious obligation for today. You don't say. This woman is dressed in flowing silk robes and a golden head mask. She appears to be a priestess of this temple. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Church of the Living Tree, Magister. She says in a soft, melodious voice. I am Agnes, priestess of this temple. How may the church assist you today? Hmm. You take a breath and focus your senses on the priestess. Intelligent eyes, confident expression, a woman used to getting her way. Expensive silk robes, an array of flashy, expensive jewelry. Thin arms, thin body, not a fighter. Imperious, impatient. Best not to waste her time. Conclusion. The priestess isn't a strong fighter, but the tides over the years have made her very rich. Okay, so as we have seen, there's no point in asking her about the murder just yet. We will uh, just try to get on our good side. This church maintains constant vigilance against the threat of subversive cults. The Inquisitors have received reports of a potential cult taking root in the village. We would greatly appreciate your assistance in helping the Inquisitors seek out and destroy these cults before they threaten the church and the Empire. Yeah, we can do that. Excellent. We'll mark the Inquisitor's location on your map. Head there when you are ready, and they will brief you on what they managed to find out. 
We'll talk again when the cult has been dealt with. Let's see here. We've only got two more ticks before we hit late night, so... We'll need to carefully consider what we're doing here. But we haven't seen any fights yet, and uh, we are almost out of time here. I'll tell you what, we'll head for the uh, side quest instead. That should hopefully trigger a couple of random encounters. As you travel along the road to your destination, you come across a cultist. The cultist appears to be unaware of your presence. For now. Perhaps you can sneak past? Yeah, no. We're a magister and a fanatic. We're gonna murder the crap out of this guy. Alright, so, um... At a glance, you can obviously tell that the Magister uses a fairly streamlined turn-based tactical combat system. Square-based grid, uh, action cards randomly drawn from your play deck. The unusual thing here, though, is the concurrently tracked initiative system. You'll notice that uh, each one of these cards has a number of seconds listed on the top left corner. We could technically play any number of cards as long as we can keep milling them, but every card we play pushes our next turn further and further back down along the track. So if we played like 10 cards in a row and didn't kill our opponent, they would probably get anywhere from three to four turns before we got our next action. In this particular case, we uh, can't get close enough for melee anyway, so uh, we'll just stick with the revolver. Looks like we took a light hit and got poisoned, but we've got another activation coming up, so we should be able to finish this guy off. We'll go ahead and use Plan Ahead. That should hopefully give us some useful cards. Yeah, that'll do it. We'll take a couple of deep breaths and uh, finish this guy off. Nice, that wasn't too bad. Sadly, it looks like we uh, didn't get any loot. There's a 10% chance that any enemy you slay will drop an item. And sometimes they have items just scattered around on these maps, too, but no such luck. You continue along the road towards your destination. As you travel along the road, you encounter some villagers. You may speak to them if you wish, or simply continue along the road when ready. Hey, look at that. You find a rusty weapon, dropped by an unfortunate adventurer. Perhaps the blacksmith can make use of this. The messenger is rummaging through a stack of messages in his bag. He greets you cheerfully. Hello there, Magister. Say, can you do me a favor? I'm swamped with messages today. If you're heading for the village square, could you help me deliver a letter? Sure, give it to me. The messenger hands you a sealed letter. Here, you'll need to deliver this letter to Erasmus the blacksmith. Oh, well that's convenient. Goodness, we are accruing quite a list of things to do. You have reached the location of the strange death, as marked on your map. 
a guard approaches you and explains the situation. A villager was found dead here a short while ago. Take a look around at the body and any clues, then talk to me again once you figure out what happened here. Well, let's have a look. You find a journal on the ground. You flip through it. From the entries, it appears to belong to a pilgrim. The final entry in the journal reads, Heading through the woods early tomorrow, the view from the clifftop at dawn is amazing. It's a dead body. You examine the body closely. It is lying in a pool of blood. There is a large bloody wound on the torso that soaked the cloth around it a dark red. Hmm, there's something interesting here. There are bits of fur on a nearby bush and paw prints on the ground. Okay, it's not conclusive, but gaping chest wound plus paw prints indicates animal attack. The guard looks at you expectantly. Well, Magister, did you figure out what caused the strange death? Yes, he was killed by a pack of wolves. The guard nods gratefully. Thanks for your help, Magister. I'll take care of the body. You've really helped us out here. The guard hands you a sealed letter. The body's taken care of. Here, give this to the gravedigger at the graveyard. He'll know what to do. You should report this to the guard captain, too. Great work, Magister. Okay, we've got one more tick until nighttime, so... Well, we just don't have time to do the town square right now, so we'll head for the graveyard instead. Make sure our uh, predecessor is properly taken care of. This man looks like the grave digger for this cemetery. He smiles humorlessly as you approach. Greetings. My name's Oofman. Welcome to the graveyard, he says, the slightest hint of amusement in his voice. Ah, you're the one who took care of the magister's body? Yes, sir. Fresh grave dug just for him when I heard and he's now resting quietly for eternity. Oh, waste not, want not, and all that. I sold some of his stuff. They'd just be going to waste otherwise. You should take some of the profits. It's the nature of my job, I guess. I help bury the bodies, and I watch the cemetery. It's a boring, thankless job, but I'm glad to have it. Welcome back, Magister. This place is pretty peaceful, isn't it? I was told to give this envelope to you. Oh? He opens the envelope and reads its contents. Ah, it's a request to handle a dead villager's body. All right, then. Here, take this. He hands you a small pouch of coins. What do you know about the murder? I don't know anything about it. I never leave the cemetery, Magister. I sleep in a small hut nearby. It's sort of my thing. I got it. Let's change the topic. Need help with anything? Hmm. There is something you may be able to help me with. Every night, for weeks now, before I fall asleep in my hut, I hear horrible sounds from the graveyard. I tried to muster the courage to investigate, 
but I'd rather not get mauled to death by wolves, bandits, or worse. So, if you can, do come to the graveyard at night and see what's going on. It's driving me crazy. Yeah, I think we can do that. Oh, thank you, Magister. Since the noises began, I always lock the gates of the graveyard at night. But since you're looking into this, I'll leave it unlocked for you. If you discover what in the God's name is making the noises so late in the night, do come back and let me know. All right, I'll see you then. Huh, that actually got us a new clue. Not sure how that ties into anything, but I guess we'll find out when we investigate. That said, um, we are going to have to put a pin in things for now. I wanted to push out to the end of the first night, but um, we're already past the hour mark here, and my throat is starting to get worn down, so... I'll tell you what, we'll hit the pause button for now, and uh, if you guys want to see more, let me know in the comments below, and... I will uh, certainly take it under consideration. Regardless, uh, if you've made it this far into the video, hopefully you've seen something that you like, in which case I strongly recommend that you uh, go check the game out for yourself. You can find out more about the game by visiting the official website, the official store page, or the developer's social media feeds. As always, links are in the description.